Um, open, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to start there, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Who's excited about the weekend we've just had? Anyone? 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 Um, so I was thinking uh, before that, um, so for Brenda, this is day one, isn't it? And so uh, Carlton was talking about um, contracts and, you know, terms and conditions. Well, um, they were fulfilled uh, today in somebody else's life which is fantastic isn't it and then i was thinking um in a few weeks um it'll be uh, 39 years in the lord for me in a few weeks and i thought to myself you know what i'm i'm actually probably more excited now than i was way back then which um people used to say to me oh you know um it just gets better and better and i'm thinking wow is that possible uh, but it does and um whether it's um you know 39 minutes or 39 years um the things of god are always an exciting thing to be part of and um you know when you see somebody um receive the spirit and then and then get baptized it's 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 a great thing and so today i just thought i'd give a little simple little talk um called all things new so anyway we'll, we'll turn to second corinthians chapter five you're probably there verse 14 it says for the love of christ constrains us because we thus judge if one died for all then we're all dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh yea though we have known christ after the flesh yet henceforth know we him no more therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new and so you sort of read those verses and um maybe it makes you also think about when the lord filled you with the holy spirit and um that realization that comes to you that jesus christ is alive and um you, you can't know that without having received the holy spirit it's not a knowable thing it can only be revealed to you uh by the lord through that through that spirit and so we we understand that Jesus Christ died for every single one of us. And, um, and he did it that we would realize that we're no longer living for ourselves. That it's not our natural life that is sort of the be all and end all. Um, course we all do things we go to work we go to school um we've got things that we have to do you've got to maintain your house you've got to stock your fridge you've got to do all of that all of that stuff has got to be has got to be taken care of but we've got to realize that we don't live for that um anymore but in verse 15 but we live unto him which which died for us and rose again that's that's what we're alive for is to um be obedient to follow the lord to to preach that word so that others might have that that same experience and you know here we are um two thousand years nearly from from the day of pentecost and the lord is still doing exactly what he was doing in here you know i said to brenda on thursday night which was a thought that came to me that the thing that has just happened you can read about it happening to people two thousand years ago exactly the same as what just happened to you 10 minutes ago sort of thing and so if we're in if we're in christ in verse 17 therefore if any, any man be in christ he is a new creature 
in the um in the greek there um the the he is is really let him be so if any man is in christ if you want to be in christ let him be a new creature old things are passed away and everything has become new brand new start brand new everything brand new life brand new outlook brand new perspective um you know we just had a we just had a baptism and we know of course that baptism is a burial service um and you know we don't hold people under and still they stop bubbling but um we 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 bury the old life the person that we were the person maybe even that we wanted to be is is put aside and and left in the waters of baptism it's buried now um we quite often hear i've said it myself you know when you bury something you don't really want to go and dig it up and so when we bury our old life we we leave it there um in the waters um uh, of baptism there our old man the old person is 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 put to death so old things old thoughts old um desires ambitions you know those things we 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 put them aside you know you can have ambitions for a career and you can go to college and and want to be something and and uh, and study something and, and and it's all great that's that's no problem with any of that but as long as the lord is number one because if he is number one he's going to bless all those things anyway he'll take care of those things if we strive after them you know then that's all we're doing but if we put the lord first we know that he's going to bless um, our undertakings the things that that um you know that we're that that we're doing in verse 18 it says and all things are of god who has reconciled us to himself by jesus christ and has given to us the ministry of of reconciliation and so you know we're now in harmony with our creator we're now in in tune with him you know to to reconcile something means to be uh to, means to be in, in agreement with something um you think about um you know reconciling a bank account you know which i'm sure everybody does religiously every month reconcile their bank account so nikki's giving me a big yes here she does it every month right but when you think about that what are you doing you are making sure that what you say you've got and what the bank say you've got are the same thing that those things are in agreement and so you know we have got this agreement now he's reconciled us to him uh to himself to wit that is that god was in christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for christ as though god did beseech you by us uh we pray you in christ's stead be ye reconciled to god for uh, for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's just nothing that we've got to offer that God might go, gee, that's that's good. I didn't have any of that before. I'd like to have some of that. It's it's not that way at all. We, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And yet he says that Jesus was made sin for us, that we might be made righteous, not because of ourselves. We're made righteousness because of our obedience by our adherence to the contract as we heard um you know earlier on today if you're going to be an ambassador of a country you, you just can't sort of rock up you know you can't sort of say i couldn't say um well as of tomorrow i'm going to be the australian ambassador to the united states now i could say that it just wouldn't be true and no matter how many times i say it it's not true if you want to be the australian ambassador to the united states 
you have got to be appointed by the head of the government and then you can legitimately say that that's uh, that's who you, that's who you are and we've been appointed to be ambassadors and it's not just because people can say that they're an ambassador for christ all day long um, but without that covenant agreement without repentance water baptism and the infilling of the holy spirit we, we're no ambassador no matter how much we say but we've been called to that we've been appointed the lord said and and, and chosen um and then having been appointed by our testimony we become representatives which is what an ambassador is an ambassador is a representative of they who sent him the government who sent him well we are representatives of course of um of jesus christ and so you know as you as you sort of go on um it can be hard sometimes you know you you might bring a testimony and it's quite difficult to remember your past life it's quite like uh, what exactly happened there you know um before 1983 there's kind of like little snippets of things but um, that that's sort of all there is it's like it was another person you know why it's like it was another person because it was another person that was another person that was that was not you that was the natural you not the not the not the spiritual you we know that jesus died that we might have life he said and that more abundantly i want you to have life but not just any old life not just any old thing i want you to have a life that's abundant sort of um rejoicing in in the things that god has um uh, called us to there praise the lord um let's see um We might go to Psalm chapter 40. I'm going to leave a little bit out, Fidel. So um, we'll go to Psalm chapter 40. <clears throat> he says, uh, this is verse 1 now, Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established our goings it's one of my favorite chapters in the whole bible this one um and it tells us about what the lord has has done for us and um you know even even from day one um the lord has established us and put us on a foundation to say i'm going to lift you out of all the terrible things that you might have happening to you or be involved in and i'm going to put your feet on this rock you're going to have maybe for the first time in your whole life a a stable foundation i'm going to give you a direction and i'm going to give you a purpose a new purpose now and you know how many people have you met that said if only i could get a new start um if only i could wipe away all the things that i've done and, and and get a new start in my life but that's impossible people might say well with the lord it's not only possible it's the purpose i want you to have a new life i want all things for you to become to become new and so you know for the first time in your life it's happened to me you think get lost i think the bible might be true first time i'd ever had that thought or i think there's a god i think that jesus christ is alive it's like my goodness that was a, it was just such a revelation you know i've been coming along to meetings for about uh, uh i guess about four months by that point and um i mean i'd read some bible verses and stuff like that but you know I was looking for the English version. I couldn't, couldn't make head and a tail of it, really. Um, but the day that I received the Holy Spirit, it just like dawned on me within 10 seconds. Jesus Christ is alive. And um, you, 
you don't know what's going to happen, of course. You don't know where your life's going to take you. You don't know any of those things. But the Lord was going to establish my goings and your goings if we allow him to. In verse 3, he's put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many will see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Our outlook changes. The things that we want to talk about change. Um, the things that we want to be involved in, uh, they change. And people will notice those things at work or at school, or wherever you might um, wherever you might find yourself, you know. Um, I'm 100% confident that the sentence, praise the Lord, never, ever was uttered by me until I received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm very, very confident of that. It never once would have come out of my mouth. And yet, you know, since then, that, that's what it's been like, that, that we, have this, we have this trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. There's not much to trust in this world. You know, you sort of look around you at institutions and governments and people in general, and there doesn't seem to be a lot that you can sort of hang your hat on and say, yep, this is something that's absolutely steadfast and true, yeah. and I can really, really trust in it. There's, there's just nothing out there except the Lord. If we want to be blessed, blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust, that that relies upon him, that follows that follows him, that is obedient um, to him. Um, it says, many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts which are toward us. They can't be reckoned up in order unto you if I would declare and speak of them. They are more than can be can be numbered. What he's saying is that the Lord has done a lot of good things for us and has blessed us and has given us this uh, this testimony. Even in our midst right here now, there's lots and lots of testimonies of um, things that the Lord has done in um, uh, in in people's lives. You know, talk there about He's put a new song in our mouth. We're, we're not a we're not a cover song you know each of us is a new composition that the lord has has written each of us has a slightly different testimony you know um but ultimately it, it comes to the same point and if you hear testimonies you know a lot of them in a row they'll all come from an incredibly divergent um lifestyle um but we all get to that that point where we start again. All things have become all things have become new. So we're not a we're not a cover song. We're a, we're a new composition. Um, um, and so we've aligned ourselves, haven't we, to Jesus Christ, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. As Jesus was raised, so have we been raised in newness of life. And we see our sister getting uh, getting baptized there. And, uh, you know, all things have become new in a moment of time. And uh, that that doesn't happen. Uh, that doesn't happen in the world. You know, we're freed from sin. We're made righteous in his sight through his uh, through his spirit. Praise the Lord. Um, let's see. Um, let's go to. Um, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. So, what are we to do with this? In verse 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service it's it's the least it's the least that we can do that given what the lord has done for us and we remember it every sunday don't we with the the bread and the cup we re, we remember his sacrifice 
and we're appreciative of his sacrifice. And so he says, I want you to present yourself as a as a living sacrifice. I'm not going to I'm not going to make you get crucified or anything like that. Um, but I want you I want you to sacrifice your natural life for me to put me first. And he describes it there as just our reasonable service. Of course, this is what you will do sort of thing. And don't be conformed to this world. How easy it is for us to uh, to get conformed to the world and think, you know, maybe I want to fit in or maybe maybe uh, it's just easier if I if I just go along with the crowd, maybe that would be maybe that would be easier. You know, we're told here, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Don't be conformed, but be um, transformed. It's interesting. Why why would we want to be conformed to a world that we're not really part of? You know, we might be in the world, but we're not of it. So why would we want to be conformed to something that we're not destined to be a part of anyway? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect uh, uh, will of God there. We've got to make sure that um, we know what God wants. We, we start off anew and we've got to know what is it that we do? What is it that we do from here? You know, and um, I guess I'm thinking about these things because Brenda just got baptized and it's day one for her. But it, it might be day 10,000 for you, but it doesn't matter. What's going to happen on day 10,000, 10,001, you know? As we, as we exercise the faith that God has given us, and we and we see God, and we see God working um, in our life, it, it gives you a confidence, doesn't it? And it gives you a, um, I, I guess it gives you eagerness, for want of a better term, to to want to build your faith up even more. And as you do that, you pray about something, and God delivers you from something and that makes you think oh i think i'll do that again and 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 we build ourselves up it says on our most holy faith we talked about a lot over the weekend people talked about um expectation and it's important that we have that um expectation you know in galatians chapter three i'll just quote this um he said are you so foolish having begun in the spirit are you now made perfect by by the flesh are you going to are you going to um uh perfect or improve your relationship with god by digging up your old man well, of course not we we wouldn't even think that and yet there are there are people that um have done and unfortunately will do that having begun in the spirit why would you turn aside um to the things to the things of this world, you know, that that transformation there, I'm sure you all know this, is um, metamorpho in the Greek. And um, when a when a, a caterpillar is turned into a butterfly, it it doesn't just sort of go into the chrysalis and legs and antenna and wings grow on it. That's not what happens. What actually happens is it gets turned into liquid mush. And from that liquid mush, it's then remade into a butterfly. And that's what happened to us. You know, the Lord just didn't sort of take us and sort of tack little bits on. What he did was he transformed us. He, he metamorphosed us into something that's completely different. It's not just a patch up job. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a complete renewal that the Lord has done, uh, has done for us there. Praise the Lord. Um, all right, we might finish. Uh, Revelation 21. I skipped a few there, Fidel, but that's all right. And verse uh, uh, one, we might start in verse one. Revelation 21, verse one. 
And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. The Lord has given us a new beginning. He made us anew. He transformed us from what we were and the pathway we were going and set us on a rock and set us on that foundation and gave us a new, a new song, a new purpose, a new direction in our life. Talking here about the new heavens and, and the new earth. We're going to be, we're going to be ready for this. We've got to make sure that when this all happens, that we don't think, oh, goodness, I better get myself ready. Too late. It's it's now that we've got to be um, uh, ready for it. Of course, one of our jobs is to tell people about the new life that's available to them. Everything has become new when we receive the Holy, when we receive the Holy Spirit. Um, this is going to be sort of the same thing, but on an exponential scale, you know. Imagine a place, imagine a place where there's no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. It's, it's impossible for us to imagine that, isn't it? But that's what it's going to be like because, because he said there, behold, I make all things new. I made you anew when I gave you the... Uh, the Holy Spirit, and you've left your old life behind. When I come back, everything is going to be new, including the, the, the world is going to be new. Jesus Christ is going to have the government upon his shoulder. He will do everything perfectly in every single in every single way. And so we've got We've got this newness to look forward to. We've had a bit of a taste of what being made new is like. We've got a bit of a taste of that. It's pretty good. I think we would all say, you know, uh, how many people are happy that they came to the Lord? Well, 100% would say that, you know. And yet one day it's going to be, you know, a, a trillion times uh, better. Behold, I make all things new. We're going to make sure that we keep putting one foot in front of the other to recognize that all things are new. The Lord has given us a brand new start. And, uh, wow, we, we should be very excited about that, about that brand new start. You know, I asked Brenda at lunchtime through a little translator thing, um, are you excited? And she said, yes excited um on the little app thing there and so it, it is very exciting i mean i know we're all excited for her but um now it's day two and day three and day ten thousand you know we want to make sure that we're um we're there when the lord returns and everything is made new all the people said amen, amen.